Well, Jeff Sessions' crusade on pot is about to run into a wall. He's about to go to court to fight a 12-year-old girl with epilepsy. This 12-year-old girl began suing the government as uh, he said that he was going to uh, take this off uh, last fall. Her name is Alexis Bortel. She filed a lawsuit against Attorney General Jeff Sessions last fall. She says she has to do this to save her life. She has epilepsy. And as Yahoo is pointing out, Jeff Sessions has made it his life's mission to make it impossible for her to access the only drug that has kept her seizures at bay, and that drug is cannabis. And to talk about her experience, and let's, let's talk about this a little bit. Actually, she's from Texas, and she might be one of these families. Her, her family might have uh, been one of the ones that uh, got our conservative libertarian representative here in Texas, David Simpson. I think that guy is a hero. Uh, out of Longview. He stood up to the TSA. He stood up to the DEA. He'll stand up to any alphabet agency that tries to take our freedom, especially when they come after our children. And uh, he nearly, well, he got the House to unanimously say that the TSA wasn't going to molest children. But then you had our former lieutenant governor, uh, former CIA agent, uh, work with the Senate to shut that down. But let's get back to uh, this, where he was able to get through in Texas, even though we don't recognize medical marijuana, he was able to get through an exemption for this particular case. And there were parents in his jurisdiction that were having to go to Colorado to get this done, but some could not afford to do that. You can't just pick up and go uh, to do that. And so here's their personal story. As a father said, uh, we were literally folding clothes and Alexis was sleeping on the couch one day. All of a sudden, I heard her make this shriek I mean, it was like a scream of terror. I looked over, and Alexis is stiff as a board, on her back, and spasming. She was diagnosed with epilepsy in 2013. Three years ago, she began taking medical marijuana, and her seizures disappeared. And now, Jeff Sessions wants to shut down that option. They said, uh, we're very optimistic that the case is going to come out the way that it should, which is that the Controlled Substances Act is going to be found unconstitutional, said her lawyer. This is very important. As I've said many times, the best way to get rid of a bad law is to rigorously enforce it. That's what President Ulysses Grant said. And Jeff Sessions is going to prove that for us again. (laughs) Several other plaintiffs, a former professional football player, a veteran, and another child are also included in this lawsuit. Her horrible seizures forced her family to move to Colorado from Texas so she could use products with compounds that were derived from marijuana. Due to the concentration of THC in one of the products that she uses, she can't cross state lines, she can't get on an airplane, she can't set foot on a military base, and she can't go into other federal buildings or lands, they say. Uh, At home here, as she was diagnosed with, uh, with epilepsy, they tried all the mild drugs, nothing worked. And so then she was left with just two options. The first one was a very uh, was, was to have surgery uh, to remove part of the brain tissue. Parents said, uh, "I don't think we'll do that." The other one was a drug. It's called felbitol, and it carries a black box warning, which is what, how they refer to it. It is the most serious warning that the FDA puts on any drugs because of possible side effects, very serious side effects, extremely dangerous side effects. Felbitol has been associated with a serious bone marrow disorder and with liver failure. But Jeff Sessions says he doesn't care because he's going to try to protect people who want to use this recreationally, even to the extent if they uh, ruin their lives using drug abuse. He's going to punish a 12-year-old girl who needs it for medical use. And by the way, it hasn't ever worked, even if he means well, even if he wants to save somebody from addiction. We should know now, after 47 years, that sending armed SWAT teams after individual users hasn't stopped the use whatsoever. Trying to do it by law enforcement is a total failure. But getting back to her story, the family decided that they would take the Felbitol, the dangerous drug, because they're not going to do brain surgery and remove part of her brain. So they say, well, let's do this. We'll risk the uh, serious bone marrow uh, disorder and the liver failure. So they're on their way to fill the prescription, and the pediatrician had a pang of conscience and called them and said, here's something you could try. 
why don't you go to Colorado and try cannabis? And they did. Weeks later, they moved, they, they packed their bags, they drove to Colorado, and uh, she started uh, taking a tincture of uh, cannabidiol, I think is the way you pronounce that, and a spray with THC. She still gets the auras. That's the warning signs that she's about to have a seizure. But she hasn't had a full-blown episode in the last three years. She doesn't get high, Jeff. Uh, this is something that is used to save her life. And you want to take that away from her. They said the only side effect is a constant threat from federal law enforcement. The threat of imprisonment. So the government however, still has this as a Schedule One drug, which says that it has no medical uses. And this goes back to the act that was passed in 1970, the Controlled Substances Act, which was, as I've pointed out many times, an exact template from the United Nations that was created in 1961. And they passed all this and declared the war on drugs in 1971, but it had all the drugs in the four different schedules. Her lawyer is representing her pro bono, he says this is the longest brief he's ever filed in his career. He believes the act is unconstitutional. Uh, it isn't just his own belief. It actually is unconstitutional. He said it violates Americans' fundamental right to travel as well as the Commerce Clause of the Constitution and the First, the Fifth, the Ninth, and the Fourteenth Amendment. I don't know why he doesn't have the Tenth Amendment in there, but good for him. He's pointing out this whole thing is unconstitutional. And I want you to see just one clip here of how this type of stuff goes down. Here, here's a clip of a handicapped man who had been panhandling, and they told him, uh, go away, so he, he leaves. He takes his money, he goes to a convenience store, and he's eating a sandwich in his car, and the cops come up and want to arrest him. He's got half a gram of cannabis. Now, to translate that, uh, in California and these other places where they've legalized it, you have um, uh, the legal ability to keep one ounce. There's 28 grams in an ounce, so this guy has half a gram. He's got one fifty-sixth of the legal amount, and I want you to see what happens. Arrest you for resisting without violence. Now I give you a, a lawful order to get to the back of the vehicle. And he's reaching over to get his I'm cane because he's handicapped and he can't get, get out of the vehicle get without his cane. Get, 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 get on the ground! 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 He's showing them his handicap sticker. Get on the ground! Get on the ground! He's got a service dog there with him. He's trying to get his cane so he can get out of the car and comply with their orders. Hit him! Now. Hit him! Kill me! I have no Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Now get out! This is America. This is what we're doing with the war on drugs. And I'm sick of this. It's time we stop this. It's time we stop taking medicine away from 18-year-old girls who have epilepsy. This is insanity. All right.